Hey guys, what's going on? Vega here from Serpent X Special Forces. In this video, we're going to be going over NVMe or SSD drives primarily for plotting or creating plots for Chia farming. There's a lot of good resources out there. I'm not an OG in the space and a lot of those OGs have been educational, informational, and helping me out as well. However, everything I'm going to go over in this video will be linked down in the description as well. I already recorded this video a number of times and I can't make it short enough, so I'm going to try to do my best right now but please hang through to the end for me this is a very good guide from chiadecentral.com which you can check out I have a few aspects highlighted however I'm not going to read it to you they talk about enterprise drives data center drives SSDs NVMEs form factors storage the whole nine yards so definitely check it out long story short you really want to shoot for an enterprise drive or a data center drive because they have higher endurance or life cycle or total terabytes written However, the price of those drives can be a little bit higher than normal. Additionally, depending on the model, you may get normal SATA speeds, but with a higher life or total terabytes written in its, in its life cycle. Uh, when we look at something like, for example, the P4610, uh, which is a thousand plus dollars or twelve hundred dollars, that may not be suitable for the average consumer, and that's what I'm really focusing on with my videos is the average consumer, you the person at home with your systems, you got the storage already, you just want to start plotting, you want to start participating. I understand that. The reason I'm talking about this is because I want to make sure that you're aware that you're picking up drives that have a decent endurance or def decent life cycle. You don't want to go and take a 250 gigabyte um, SSD, normal SSD, and start trying to plot on it and eventually hurting your SSD through its life cycle. Now, their GitHub does have some pretty good information. I'm sure the pricing is outdated as the hard drive prices across the board have been pretty much climbing up ever since Chia started to gain that momentum. But it's pretty good to see the overall gigabyte per price, the overall capacity, uh, the OS, the actual OS capacity that you would see, and then the overall terabytes written life cycle. Enterprise SSDs and data center SSDs tend to be able to write more than a standard consumer SSD or NVMe drive. However, just to get you started, what I would recommend, me personally, and this is just my opinion, but feel free, again, OGs and, and, and professionals in the space, leave a, leave a comment down below and, and, and help out the community. I greatly appreciate it. You guys have been wonderful in the past couple of videos, and I couldn't thank you enough. But looking at the form factors the standard motherboard nowadays is going to come with an m.2 slot maybe two or three and then sata ports what i would recommend is you probably already have a sata ssd if it's 500 gigabytes or more go for it but here on this uh website on on chia de central land they do say try to aim for you know 400 where did i put it 480 gigabytes to 960 gigabyte SATA SSDs. If you're trying to do it on a little piddly one, you're going to you're going to wind up wearing it out because the amount of writes that it can do. You, normally, the higher the capacity, the more writes that it can do overall. But you got to just double check, and you could always check the tech specs, which we'll go into in just a moment. But I would recommend a gumstick drive, is what I call it, or an M.2 NVMe SSD. Uh, you can use re regular SATA SSDs, but something I want to show you here in my plots, and of course I lost internet connection, so I'm going to have to restart. Uh, but the, the, these two plots right here is plotting on my C drive. My C drive is the Corsair MP600 uh, 4 series NVMe, and it, it's perfectly capable. It can get the job done. I can plot in parallel, maybe one or two or three. However, on my SATA SSD, I will notice that it bumps into an issue after a while. And what I would recommend is try to avoid that. My, my 850 EVO is only 500 gigs. So you really want to try to avoid it, even though I have been successful with plotting with that SSD, no problem. So it is doable one at a time. You know, put them in a queue, let them plot ever so often, and you'll be fine. But the NVMe drive is what I would recommend, especially if you have a motherboard that has open slots or M.2 um, areas. Now, if you don't have an open M.2, you can get an add-in card. Uh, that allows you to expand uh, the capabilities or have you know one or two or even four NVMe drives on that one but there's a con there and the biggest con is thermals what I mean by that is if we look here and I get out of your way right below me we look at the MP or the force MP 600 and you can see that the max temperature 
was 75 C with the average temperature being around 68 C. We are borderline, if not already throttling this MVME drive and it does have the heat sink on it that uh, it comes with and it's still thermal throttling. Now, biggest thing, you wanna make sure you have good airflow on these drives, especially the add-in cards if you're gonna have multiple MVME uh, drives connected even SSDs, if you're gonna have to gum stick, but they're normal SSD speeds, you know, 560 megabits per second or megabytes per second, don't, 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 don't push it. Don't push it with the thermals, keep it nice and cool, make sure you have good airflow in your case and you'll be perfectly fine. But yes, on this one, my NVMe drive is running really hot. Now it's not protected by the motherboard's uh, fan, the X570 chipset fan, that may help out but I just need to increase my overall case fans at the front. The other drive that I've been using is the 850 EVO, and you can see that the max temperature it hit was 57C, but the average is 48C. Now, I'm not too worried about that because I know this drive is on the back side of my case in a vertical position with no airflow, but it's perfectly fine and it's perfectly capable of getting the job. Just know that sometimes you may have to restart your plot in order to do so. To do that, you just click the three dots, hit the delete, and what, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to, uh, unfortunately, clear out my temp folder, which right now there's nothing in there, but if there were files in here, I would have to clear it out after I close out my wallet and then start the plots all over again. I will lose time, which is inefficient, unfortunately, but it is something that I bumped into at least two to three times since plotting with the 850 Evo. So the biggest thing is just to wrap up what NVMe drive or SSD you should get, you wanna get something with good endurance or overall terabytes written or life cycle. You wanna get something that's high capacity. I would recommend one terabyte or more. And you wanna get something that you're gonna be able to keep cool, right? If you get the normal gum stick drive with no type of protection, no type of heat sink, very little airflow in your system, that's gonna be a problem. So you wanna make sure you cover those. Now, the increased storage size will allow you to plot in parallel like this one terabyte drive even though it's my operating system which i do not recommend doing um i can plot at least three at the same time you just want to make sure that you're not filling these drives all the way up if i were to plot three in parallel i would still have a little bit of space but you don't want to be like this four terabyte drive that i filled up with plots uh, it's a platter hard drive, so that's fine. But for the NVMe or SSD, you don't want to do it because you need to leave space in there for it to allocate or rearrange, okay? So make sure you're paying attention to that. But I can plot three at a time. Now, though, I do have another drive on the way with more capacity that I will be talking about plotting in parallel, my settings and everything. So stay tuned for that. But I just wanted to give you the data or just give you my personal recommendations on what type of NVMe or SSD you should consider. Now for the platter hard drives, we can see in Q1, there were 64 million hard drives sold. I have a feeling that Q2 is gonna blow Q1 out of the water because we've seen this increased, uh, not hype, but this increased eagerness for the consumers or for the average small farmers like you and me to get into the space. Yes, there's big whales out there. Yes, the network's huge. Yes, you know, we're, we're a plankton in a sea of whales, but I'm still gonna participate and you may want to too. So that's why I'm giving you this data about the NVMe or SSD drives. Now for the platter hard drives, we can see that there's been an increase in overall drives sold. Um, you know, here's by vendor, client PCs, enterprise, so on and so forth. The enterprise still, you know, getting most of the storage because they need it for cloud services, AI, so on and so forth. Um, you can check out this article link down below, but also backblaze.com gives me something very useful here. And it, tell, it tells me what drives, model number, the overall capacity, and the average failure rate, the AFR right here, which is very interesting to me because I have four uh, Iron Wolves from Seagate and one uh, Exos uh, 16 from Seagate as well. And you can see here the overall sample size uh, of each one, like for example, the 10 terabyte sample size of 1200 had an average failure rate of 2.03%. That's a, that's, that's a little bit more than I would be comfortable with. However, I wouldn't be too concerned for the average consumer because it's very unlikely that you at home with less than 200 terabytes of storage will actually kill your drives because of 
chia farming. If anything, what would happen is you probably wear out your SSDs before your platter hard drives go out. Now, yes, years down the road, the platter hard drives, because it's mechanical, right? Mechanical uh, parts fail, while SSDs has no moving parts. Uh, eventually, yes, it will die. And you can see here, there's actually another metric here that it shows us, you know, SSDs had such a low failure rate compared to regular hard drives. And again, we know this because it's mechanical. But I'm just saying, as far as you farming Chia, I doubt that would happen. Uh, you know, it's, it's going to be years before that even uh, happens. Now, there is a chance that you may get a DOA. You may accidentally drop it. Your dog may hit the case. Your cat may jump. I don't know. Something can happen, cause the hard drive so, to, to fail. But it's unlikely that you would do it just because you were farming Chia. It's more likely that you're going to run the life cycle out of that NVMe or SSD because you plot it so much. Now, for my MP600, and I would recommend doing this for all your NVMe drives. Type in the, the manufacturer, the model, and then TVW, terabytes written. And nine times out of ten, you're going to see their main website and then look for tech specs. I have over 3,600 terabytes uh, written that I can do. So 3,600 is a lot for the average consumer. And because I only have less than 60 terabytes right now, I doubt that I'll, I'll run this NVMe drive out, but I, that's not the only drive I'm using. I'm using the 850 Evo, and then I have the ADATA SX8200 Pro over there, and then I got another one coming. So I'm not gonna kill my drives, but the cool thing is Hardware Info will actually show you the life cycle of the overall drive. And right here, you can see I'm already down 10% when, since I started Chia farming, and then of course, uh, we have more and more so just keep that in the back of your mind yeah, But that's gonna do it for me today guys. Thank you so much for watching if you got any useful information out of this video Please do me a favor hit the like button and greatly helps out the channel check out links down in the description below that helps support us as Well as subscribe for additional content. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. You take care of yourselves and I'll catch you in the next one